Dear colleagues and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this talk on nasal and vocal tract coupling, variation of the biopharyngeal opening in 3D casts. My name is Miriam Havel. I'm an ENT and phoniatrician and the University Hospital of Munich in Germany. And this data is a part uh, of an ongoing research uh, together with uh, Johann Sundberg, from the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. So what is this about? Uh, when we talk about nasalization in singing, um, it's uh, a controversial issue. Uh, however, there is some investigations that have shown and documented velopharyngeal openings in operatic singers. And there is also some data in terms of mathematical modeling and also perceptual analysis and some in vivo exper experiments during the uh, last years. And what we do here is uh, that we try to experimentally analyze the effects of uh, variation of uh, velopharyngeal openings on uh, yeah, acoustical effects uh, on the vowel spectra. So we used for this uh, vocal tract uh, cast, 3D uh, printouts of vocal tract in different vowel configuration, uh, an A, an E, an E, and an U, and we coupled those to a um, uh, cyanonasal tract uh, model uh, derived from the CT scan, and this was the experimental setup. Here you can see the nasal tract. It's um, other way around, here's the nose, here's the heart uh, palate, and this would be the velopharyngeal region, and this is um, the uh, vocal tract um, tightly seed to it by means of plasticine, and here's an earphone which provides a sign sweep excitation which travels through the system and is picked up here by a microphone uh, at the, the lip opening. And the velopharyngeal port is modulated by uh, yeah, tubes of different sizes. Uh, the dimensions are picked out here um, with the length and the cross section area and a ratio um, of area to length. And you can see that the narrow tube um, has a small ratio which increases with the diameter of the specific tube. So this is what we get as a response uh, curve here on the left, a row in the response curve after excitation of that system by Tombstone software, which uh, generates uh, the sign sweep and also records uh, that, uh, the microphone signal at the same time. And the middle panel represents the microphone earphone combination and combining those two curves you obtain the corrected response curve that is uh, quite a realistic estimate of uh, transfer function of the vocal tract in this case uh, the vowel u uh, so let's have a closer look at the u um, and you can see the situation of closed vocal port here. So the area to length ratio in this case is zero. Uh, so this is the vocal tract uh, of the vowel U in isolation. And let's have a look what's happened when we attach a narrow, very narrow um, VPO tube uh, to uh, this. Uh, so uh, you can see some effect here that are going to be more pronounced uh, with a wider VPO tube. So you still have more and more effects of uh, the coupling with the nasal tract when you widen the tube. Clearly seen here in the um, lower frequency, lower frequency region where the first form and peak travels up in frequency. Um, and there's also some uh, effects here in a high frequency region. Um, the dip that we think that is caused by the nasal uh, tract itself uh, seem to be quite shallow here. So let's have a look at the other vowels. Here's an overview 
of all vowels measured, vowel E, vowel E, vowel U and vowel A. And in, in those three, um, vowel E, E and A, you can see a quite marked dip uh, here in a lower frequency region, which uh, is more pronounced uh, when the VPO is increased. And also in this case, you have some effects on the high frequency region as well. So this is to demonstrate the systematical um, effects of uh, the coupling with the uh, nasal cavity by different uh, VPO sizes. And another interesting um, aspect of this would be the, in, the effects on the um, spectrum balance. As we know, the spectrum balance is of great, great relevance for both uh, speech and singing. And um, the effect of uh, BPO on this level, uh, on this balance, can be measured when we look at the first of, at the level of the first form and peak here and compare it to the uh, highest uh, form and peak in the high uh, range between two uh, to four kilohertz. And you can see the level difference here is uh, 26 decibel, decibels. And when you look uh, at uh, those effects in, in the uh, transfer function, which is obtained after coupling uh, with a, a large VPO tube, you can see um, a level difference of uh, 18 decibels. So this is a clear effect of boosting uh, the high spectrum partials. So when we talk about this, um, we can also look uh, at the other vowels. Um, and uh, this is another uh, presentation mode for for the change of uh, level difference with uh, with varying uh, coupling tube dimensions, and uh, you can see clear effects in vowel u and vowel e, and also some effects uh, um, in vowel e, and very very small effects for vowel A. So um, this is, of course, um, a hard-walled cast. So the situation in, uh, in, in vivo is completely different because we have vibrating walls and mucosa lining, uh, which produce uh, a, a lot of losses. Um, and we also, uh, know that uh, the VPO shape and the uh, nasal anatomy um, vary a lot between individuals, but also intra-individually. Um, but uh, nevertheless, we were able to see some systematic effects um, as uh, the VPO dip, uh, which was uh, quite marked somewhere uh, between 500 and 600 hertz. Um, the shallow dip in uh, the vowel U um, may be related to the difference in the distribution of the standing wave, which is quite narrow in U and wide in other vowels. Uh, so we, we see um, some effects uh, um, on, in the variable variability of the VPO size. Um, as uh, what, what has been observed already in, 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 a, in, in a study uh, from Berg and Sundberg. And we also uh, could uh, find some enhancement in the high frequency spectrum partials um, as an effect. It also has been observed in long-term average spectra analysis of sung vowel sequences. So we see some effects um, in terms of dip and also in terms of boosting the high frequency and think that uh, the nasalization may be used as a means to enhance the high spectrum per partials. Um, and we would like to uh, thank uh, 
Professor Echtenach and Dr. Chaza for providing the 3D imaging and STL files for the vocal tract printing. And also I would like to thank you for your attention for attending uh, this talk.